Because it takes so much fucking guts to do what you just did. Yeah, I appreciate it. Welcome back to the show, Foster. Thanks, man. Um, and I know I called you off. I called you like five minutes ago, and you jumped on the on your deal. You know. Yeah, it's but, yeah, it's for the audience to let give them some context. You know, I was coming into the studio anyway, and um, I got a message from you saying, "Hey, could we jump on soon? Because I got I got to talk to you about some stuff, and you know, I just got to vent and get some stuff out there and." You know, you always call me when you want to, you know, not call me, but you know that I have the platform. I'm like, yeah, you have an open invite out, Foster. Just come on here and vent whenever you need or feel well, like you want to. What's on your mind, bud? You know, uh, there's going to be a lot of people. Um, hopefully, everybody that I know watches this because, you know, there's some things. A lot of people are going to hate me, bro. Even you. Just going to be straight up. Even you. It's debatable. I mean, you know. it's No, it's not debatable. A lot of people. What's on your mind? (laughs) Huh? What's on your mind? You know, I uh, lived a long time of of addiction. Everybody, you know that I do, too. uh, But I thought I could play the game, you know. I thought I could, I could uh, share my story, and uh, put it out there. And still use, you know. And I keep trying to do do different things, you know. And uh, in recovery, and and with 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 people, and trying to and none of it's working. It's because you can't promote what you don't have, you know. Yeah, no. Did you relapse? Oh, yeah, a long time ago, brother. How how long ago? Uh, probably uh, let's say I'd never been clean. Okay. I don't hate you. <laughs> I don't hate you, and I can tell you why, man. Because you're sitting here and talking about it. You know, there's there's a difference <laughs> with intentions too. You know, you you have the intention. It's it's you're trying, you're working on it, you're putting your story out there, and and your story is not an easy story to tell. People respect you just because you have enough balls to even open your mouth to talk about your story, dude. I know that's, and I'm talking people as in me. Like, I have never had to live in your shoes, but I know people who have had to live in your shoes. And I know how difficult it is for them to even talk, you know, openly, one on one in a private session with me. And I'm a very easy person to talk to. We know this. And I have people that open up to me all the time about trauma and shit that's happened in their past and their childhood. And they they have a tough time even talking one on one with me, let alone you're you're on the Internet, bro. And you're talking about some of the most traumatic shit that I've ever heard in my fucking life. Like literally the first time you were on my show within the first two minutes you told me about your story and I said, okay, let's get into it. You know, like that's, it was a, it's something that's never going to leave my head, but not in a bad way, in a, in a way that's going to be helpful and useful for others. You know, um, there are 
there is somebody that I've been talking to lately. They they come or we talk on the phone and or on the internet. They're local. Very similar story to you, man. Um, and it, it's a girl, you know, so it happens with them more, obviously, but still. And never even can talk about it with anybody. Nobody knows. It's one of those things where it's like just shoved deep down and it affects her recovery where she can't even get to day two or three because it's just a constant thing in her head. And I say, keep saying the more you talk, the more you talk. So don't, man, I don't hate you at all. I respect you even more for even just saying something. And and you have the want, you have the intention, you want to do this. You know, it's not like you're sitting there and you're fucking tweaking out all day, are you? No, no. I mean, okay. I, it's my no, no, no. I, I mean, I I will go. You know, I'll go. I'll go a week or so. You know, and then I'll be all. And it's like, and I, I. Bro, I want to help addicts so bad, but I can't seem to help myself, you know. And I, it, and I'm not trying to make excuses or or uh, get people to feel. I, that's not what it's about. It. I just. You wanted to come clean. It's been. Yeah, I just had to because I, I want, I want, I feel that I'm supposed to be doing stuff to help others, you know. And I, this is where I'm supposed to be, but I can't, I can't do that if I'm not all right, you know, and I can't figure out how to, fuck, how to get all right, JD, that's the problem, you know? The other, yeah, and that's the other thing is too, man, is you are still talking, you are still, like, it's not, this is the first time you've talked about this though, right? This is the first time you're opening up about this. Oh yeah, most definitely, yeah, I, matter of fact, I was, I was asleep. I've been I've been not feeling good all day, and I was asleep. And I woke up and I said, "Man, I'm supposed to start a, a program on Zoom, a uh, recovery program on Zoom on Tuesday." And then I'm supposed I was start I'm supposed to start a podcast, and I'm like, "How in the heck can I do this? This is I'm living a lie, you know." And, and is it just is it still only meth, or is there other yeah, substances? No, no, yeah, it, it's okay. Not well, I mean, what can you progress to, really? You know, well, I mean, are you drinking? Are you, no, no, you know, no, no, shooting no, no, dope? No. You know, there's a lot of different ways to progress, bro. No, you know, well, so yeah, I know, but for me, that's like, you know, yeah, no, 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 no. it's never switched. Okay. No. Um, my other thing is too, like, you know, I've had I've had a guy on the show. His name's Ken Anderson. He's actually he's from a little bit of your area. He's from um, Wisconsin originally. Um, he wrote a book called um, Harm Reduction: How to Change Your Drinking. Um, he has a group on Facebook, 10,000 people in there. It's called HAMS. It stands for Harm Reduction, Abstinence, uh, Moderation, and Support. Um, and it's a great, you know, place. You know, I love that group. But his thing is, he does planned intox days. Once a week, he shuts off his phone, you know, turns off, and doesn't do any internet stuff. He watches movies all day, and he drinks a bottle. You know, he has 17 shots, and he drinks a bottle responsibly, and while watching TV, you know, I'm not telling you to shoot meth responsibly, <laughs> right. you know, but at the same time, you know, he is somebody who is looked up to in the community because he helps people. He helps addicts. He helps alcoholics. But at the same time, you know, he doesn't want to go completely abstinent. And he has a way of moderating himself for over a decade. Dudes, dudes in his 50s, 60s, you know three yeah. doctorates you know like master's degrees on master's degrees he's a learned dude and the thing is you know i was always told i'm too smart for my own good right like and a lot of addicts were told that we can't get out of our own way right you know we don't follow our own advice and and i'm susceptible to that too there's so many times where i'm giving advice to people i'm like that's you should really fucking do that yourself man right <laughs> you know we're not perfect people bro and the minute we expect ourselves to be perfect is the minute we start falling. You know, right. the minute we put ourselves on this pedestal where other people do, you know, you don't want to be on a pedestal. You, we need to be genuine and honest. And that's that is this is going to help you in your recovery. Just opening up like this to use less. I'm not judging you for using here and there over the last year, bro. I'm not. 
I I am not whatsoever. I don't, you know, people do frown upon it, but I'm not most people. I, I think that as long as you can be honest with yourself and others, maybe not in a moment, because even in the steps, it talks about, you know, at step nine, you know, it's about being willing to make amends, but you don't make all the amends, right? It's the intent. It's the willingness. Right. You're fully yeah. willing to be in recovery. You are in recovery. Even today, in my opinion, I still consider this you are in recovery because recovery is not like clean, sober. Recovery is a mindset that you have, uh, in my opinion. A recovery is a mindset that you have of like, for me, I started my recovery journey April you know, 25th, 2018. I had a you know relapse with drinking and I drank off and on for nine months, but not alcoholically. But I still did drink and I still talk about that. It's still part of my story. Yeah. You know, I can't change what has happened. All I can do is learn from it and help others learn from my mistakes or my lessons, because not everything was a mistake, but they are lessons still. Yeah. I, you know, I, when I first started writing in the, the groups like I talked about, that's when I started thinking about getting clean, you know. And I, when I was writing, I did it all for me and I was right. And then my, you know, I just got that big head. Everybody was asking me questions. Everybody's asking me this. What what can I help you with? What can you you know help me foster? And 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 I didn't take the time to fix me, you know. I just said, okay, sure, let me let me help you, you know. And and it was with sincere with, with sincere sincerity, but it was it was almost like kind of hoping that maybe you helping them would rub off on you, and then you help them would help you. I mean, and it does. And then, and then it became then I became foster, you know, the guy the man in, in this group, everybody's like foster, foster. And, and I rode with it, you know, I did. I rode, okay, let's, Hey, I'm foster. You still are, you know, I'm like the Fonz of freaking <laughs> the, 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 the Facebook group. Right. And so I, uh, I just, I just started doing what I just lived a lie. And guess what, though? Our uh, Fonz was in his 30s hanging out with teenagers that were in high school. So, you know, <laughs> you, you know, well, I'm in my 50s. Hanging take out everything with, with a grain of salt, bro. Take everything with a grain of salt. Listen, you did what you did, but you're talking about it now as part of your story. Do you know how many people are out there right now, even in the rooms or watching or listening or in those groups that are saying I'm in recovery and I'm sober and they might have got a little high last week, but they're too afraid to talk about it. You know, this happens way more I know, than I know it does. it's talked about. Yeah, I know it does, but and and it even talks about it in basic text and in, 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 in the blue book, you know, about that one that one guy that knows all the liter the literature, he knows everything, but he's not doing it, you know? Well, and I wouldn't even say that you're not doing it. It's it's just that you're doing it, but you're also doing the other things too. Right. You know, because remember, the big book isn't about teaching us how to not do it anymore. It's about learning how to, you know, live regular without it. You know, because our problems aren't drinking and drugs. They're the solutions to our problems. So in the book, in the text, you're not going to find in my opinion, you know, the solution of how to quit your drinking forever, how to stop your drinking. It's like a guide that this book is an outline on how to live your life better. Yeah. You know, so has your life improved since you've started in recovery and telling your story? Now, like I said, take out the, the guilt from using, take that guilt out from using here and there. Cause you haven't been using every day. Have you? Yeah. Every day? Uh, well, no, not every day. But no, I, yeah. I, like I'll have weeks. I'll have a week, two weeks, you know, where I don't. Yep. But. Exactly. So my point is you live your recovery more than you live your drug addict life. Then, yeah, then my prior one, yes. Yes. So it is more like you're in recovery. You talk recovery. You breathe recovery. You sleep recovery. When you're on Facebook, you're not in, you know, talking about how you're going to get a high. You're talking about recovery and helping people. Right. Are you, did you sometimes get high? Yeah. But guess what? You're living your recovery out loud still. You're talking about recovery. You're trying to be positive for recovery. 
it's it's we're on it's different now it's 2022 everything's online there's nothing in person really for even meetings as much as i used it's not like you are going into these meetings and you're grabbing chips and you're you know and doing all the no the right. recovery journey started when your recovery journey started bro yeah. you know it the the dates i don't i don't like the i like the dates but i don't i have a love hate relationship with sober dates yeah i don't like um, them either <clears throat> my problem with them is say um i know this happens all the time people relapse with like drinking you know, I, I had this dude, Larry, on. He's, like, your age, got a couple of years on. You might even watch his episode. It's a great, you know, this old-school dude from Boston. Um, he told an hour and a half of funny war stories, you know, and, you know. But my point is, he got clean from Coke in 87. And then he was strictly N.A., N.A., N.A. in the program, working the steps, sponsees, sponsor, the works. Six years later, he moves now he's not near his home group now he stops going to meetings now he meets neighbors the neighbors get him to have a drink he has one non-alcoholic zima and he's like well my day's at zero so i might as well do some heroin because i never did that with last time and then right. he does heroin for three years every day yeah you know because of that date thing yeah. So, like, as opposed to when you're counting days and you're like, oh, well, I had a non-alcoholic beverage. It is what it is. And then he won't shoot dope, you know, or there's the people that, you know, especially, you know, I see kids or people in their 20s. I say kids now because I'm 35, but I see kids in their 20s and they're dying everywhere because they pull together 30 days in rehab and then they get out and then they have one drink and they're like, oh, shit, I can't get a chip anymore for AA. So I might as well shoot some heroin because I can't get a chip. And then they die on their relapse because they do a bag big enough like they used to before. You know? Yeah. So the, the counting days thing is such like. A, for me, it's a pride thing and I always screw it up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, if I'm like, oh, I got I got 55 days. Then immediately on 55 days, I, I relapse because it becomes prideful for me, you know, and I. Uh, so is it always I, at 55? I just knew that you could put it out there for me, you know. Yeah, man, of course. Like, and I, and I love you for it. And, 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 and you know, I. I appreciate you want to tell me, right? It's, I appreciate I, I respect that. you, brother. I do. I you know, and, you. and I respect you. I talk about your story all the time, not in a bad way, but in a way to help other people. Your story does help people, bro. And this is part of your story that's going to help people. The worst thing that you can do right now is beat yourself up over it. Well, you know. Let, let anybody that has their preconceived things, anything in your head right now, is what you've heard, like, either, you know, your stepdad say, because you grew up in recovery, right? Not yeah. grew up early enough, but as a teenager, you're around recovery. All so the time. you're hearing all these negative things because it's natural to. We beat ourselves up, our inner, our inner monologue, our inner dialogue. You know, we are way meaner to ourselves than we are to anybody else. It's just proven. It's just yeah. facts. Everybody is. Unless you're the biggest narcissist in the fucking world, there's nobody that's going to be meaner to you more than yourself in your head, you know? So right. please take that too. You're saying all the things in your head that you're afraid that people are going to say to you. But really, the people that matter in your recovery are the people that are going to be like me and say, thanks for sharing. I'm still here and I still love everything that you've talked about in your recovery because it's still helpful things like you know i had this dude in rehab he was my rehab manager we were in sober living he was there every day he gave me so much advice um he was like in his 40s he had like 18 months clean at the time from meth um and all of a sudden he was gone for like two days and you know he had shot up and went back into rehab and, you know, I talked to him at a meeting. I saw him at a meeting like a week later once he was off blackout and we got to the same home group. And 
I'm like, so what happened? He goes, did a shot, went to instant psychosis, hated my life, smoked a joint, went back into rehab. And I um, said, okay. Um, but at first, when I found out that he relapsed, in my head, I'm like, this is like two months into being sober for the first time in my life. I'm still all fucked up. I don't know what's going on. I'm still trying to learn shit. And I said to my sponsor, and I talked to my therapist, I'm like, what do I do? All this shit that he told me. We talked every day. He gave me so much advice. They're like, still listen to his advice. The only problem was he stopped listening to his advice. His advice was still valid. The things he said were still valid. The only thing was he stopped listening to his own advice. That's the only difference. And I was like, oh, shit, that's true. You know, and that's what, you know, he ended up saying, too, was I just stopped listening to myself. Yeah. And that's that's what happens, man. So, hey, listen, I don't look at you any different. I respect you even more now just because you said something and you want it out there. And this is part of your story, bro. In five years, you could laugh at the fact that, man, look at how I tried recovery the first year. <laughs> you know, this could be a joke for you in five years. It's it's one of those things where until we say it out loud and we let it out, it's going to eat us alive. Yeah. Just like you and your stepdad. That shit was eating you alive for how long until you started talking about it, you yeah. know? And then yeah, you take it. ownership of the story by take by talking about it from your your perspective. It's it's part of your story, bro. It's not supposed to be perfect. If it's perfect, I I call bullshit <clears throat> on the people that tell me all these like sunshine and you know all these rainbows and how perfect their sobriety is and how nothing ever goes wrong. Bullshit. You're lying. Yeah. This is hard. This is real life hard shit, man. And to get I think through, it's harder than anything I've ever been through, even the other crap, you know? It's really because, do. do you know why? I think I know why. At least with the other shit, you were a child who didn't know any different. And it's a very confusing time for a kid. And I'm sure, I'm, I have to say I'm sure because I don't know, but it would have to feel like a whirlwind where you don't even get a chance to even think about what's going on because you're just being tossed around literally and figuratively and you don't know and you're being drugged up as a kid. I barely have memories uh, pre seven years old and I don't have any trauma. So I can't even imagine. This is something that you have been in the driver's seat for, for 45 years. So it is going to be harder because you're in the driver's seat. You know, when you're five to 10 years old and being, you know, abused by adults, you point the finger at those fucking adults that are doing this shit. It's them. They did this to me. Yeah. It's this is harder for you because we know as addicts, we put ourselves in these shoes. And you got to you know, figure right back on yourself, you know, whatever. Like I just got hurt last week. I, I um. I which my call my I almost broke my tailbone. It's like a bad contusion. It was black and shit. And um, I went to the hospital and they gave me naproxen, you know, which is stronger than Tylenol, but it's not opiates, right? Right. <clears throat> and I said, my wife's an alcoholics alcoholic, you know, you know what I call a true alcoholic, where she was a drinker and right. like I'm an alcoholic, but I'm an addict. Um, so I said, she was like, I'm so sorry. That doesn't, it doesn't work for you. Cause it hasn't really been hitting me at all. And I was like, listen, this is all me. I did this to me. I take ownership of it. If this was you taking the proxen for your bruised tailbone, you'd feel good. Probably. I'm sure, you know, right. I made my bed by getting a high tolerance to painkillers for a fucking decade of daily using. Right. I I made this bed and I have to now sleep in it and it is what it is. So I think that's why it's it's harder because like it's not like somebody did this to you. Right. You know, only you can get yourself out of this one. Yeah. But you know, but you I are getting you bro, you hit me up. This is you getting yourself out of it. Yeah. Because I I wanted I want to do it, man. I do. I I mean, I I, I you know, I believe in everybody has a calling you know and i and i know that my calling is to work with addicts and and help people in recovery you know i i've, I've known it for a long time but it it's hit me really hard lately you know it really has and it's uh and i just had a, 
I was thinking, how am I going to get out here and tell everybody that I, I'm, a, I'm a, I'm a liar just yeah. straight up. That that's, but that's what that is, bro. But when, when I lied, you know, when I lied and I continue to use that, that's, I, I just have to call it how I feel it because that oh, way, I understand that. that way, that way it's, that way it's, it's out of me, mm-hmm. you know? And, and, and I did, I lied and, and I didn't lie with malice. I just, I just lied because I was too ashamed and too afraid to tell you the truth because I didn't want you to view me less than, you know, and anybody else. But I understand the reservation. I but would... you're only, you're only as clean as your darkest secret, right? Yep. And so my darkest secret was definitely not keeping me clean and I wasn't clean from it. So I felt like if I talked to you, and I put it out there and I get it out there and I make amends to the ones that I have to privately. I can begin my journey. You know? Yeah, this is like it, man. This is because for me, this is day one right here, you know? Right. And here. well, this could be day one sober, bro. But this yeah. is not day one of your journey, man. This is not day one of your journey. You your book has been this is like chapter five of your recovery. You know what I mean? The shit you've been through. The shit you've been through, dude, even since your recovery started here, I'll say it that way for you, too. Since your recovery started and from what I know about you with your mom and your wife, like, bro, this is not easy shit. You're alone. I get that. Like, and I know how alone you felt feel because we've talked about it. <clears throat> this is the fourth time you've been on my show, but we've talked all the time in Messenger. Right. You know, I see your posts. I see your videos. I, I see what you're doing, man. I know this is hard for you. But at the same time, I know how much you love connecting. Right. I, I know how much you love finding the other addicts and finding some commonality and getting through this together. Right. So, yeah, I this, this might be day one since when did you use last? Can you tell me that? Was it earlier? No, it was yesterday. OK, so day one. You're right. Yep, this is day one for no drugs. No, it wasn't yesterday, day before. Okay, yeah, either, but still, still my point still, is. Still the same thing, you know, it wasn't, yeah. My point is, bro, is your recovery started a long time ago. Your recovery started, what, in Arizona almost two years ago. Yeah. You know, if I'm not mistaken, you know, I have a weird memory. I'm pretty sure it was Arizona, right? It well, was no, summer, was here, but, then, but then I ended up. Then you there. went to Arizona. Okay, I knew there was an Arizona for you at one point. Yeah. But yeah, dude, like your recovery journey started a while ago and then you opening up started a while ago and now you're opening up more. It's just Pandora's box. We got shit shoved in there, right. you know, and sometimes you're we're not ready to tell the secrets yet because we need to work through other shit before we can let go of that last secret. You know, it's not like you've been sitting on your ass and not doing any kind of work on yourself in this last year and a half. No, I, I mean, I still do my five meetings a day. I still do everything I was doing before, you know, bro. Because even I, when I relapsed with drinking, I was working the steps every day. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, I, and guess what? And I think you're in the same kind of boat. I am right now. I was because when I relapsed with drinking, it was May 25th, 2019, which was at 13 months sober. Um, that's when I relapsed and I, I drank not alcoholically. I drank here and there at pool parties, go to a club restaurant or whatever, go see a comedy show, you know, Christmas holidays or whatever. I wasn't drinking alcoholically, but I was still drinking. drinking. This episode is sponsored by MJ's progress, not perfection meeting center association. We are in our meeting center where we do all these meetings for mental health and addiction. I can do this podcast anywhere. I can do this at home. I can do this in a closet. I can do this in a basement. It doesn't matter. All I need is somebody else to talk to about addiction and recovery. What I can't do from anywhere is help people with their addiction and their mental health problems. If you can help out, you know, we do have a Venmo. We have a Cash App. We have a PayPal. We have an address you can send a check to. And, you know, all the money that gets donated goes towards rent, goes towards keeping the lights on, and goes towards keeping the internet on. So please, you know, if you can get five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, it doesn't matter. Anything you can is so appreciated. And if you are a local business, if you're a national business, whatever, and you want to be a part of what we're doing, you know, you can reach out to me and we can talk about how you can be a sponsor. 
but I'll let you get back to the episode. Right. Um, and that lasted until February 28th, 2020. So almost a year, um, about solid nine months. But I worked the steps the entire time. Every okay. day I was still doing a 10 step. I was still doing my gratitude. If I was catching a resentment, I didn't have a sponsor, but I was still calling people in recovery that I trusted in the program. And I would do a fit step with them and tell them about my resentment right. <clears throat> and talk to them. So, you know, and I truly believe I didn't go overboard with drinking and I didn't do anything crazy or go into drugs from drinking because I was checking myself daily. I was working the steps. I was still in, you know, I think that the steps are designed for living that anybody can utilize, whether you're a drug addict, an alcoholic, or a normie, and you just have some other shit you want to deal with. Whatever is making your life unmanageable, take the steps, take the word alcohol in one, remove it, and put whatever makes your life unmanageable, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's a cousin, whatever the fuck it is. Put it in there and work the steps on it, and your life's going to be a little bit better. Right. Um, so, you know, you you have been doing the same shit I did when I when I had mine with drinking, and we check ourselves every day. And now I got to the point where <coughs> February 29th, 2020, almost two years ago, I woke up hungover, and I said, "Well, not supposed to be hungover, JD." And this is that part, like, do you drink more? Do you do drugs now? Because, you know, drugs always fix the hangover. Or do you never drink again? Right. And that's when I realized, oh, shit, it's leap day. This is a cool sober date. And yeah. might as well quit now. And I quit then. And yeah. so haven't had a drink since. But <clears throat> and then quarantine hit two weeks later for <laughs> COVID. <laughs> And then, you know, shit's hitting a fan for, you know, but my point is, though, is that I still worked the program even in my relapse. Yeah. And I think that saved me from dying. And I think that saved you from dying. Yeah, I think you I think, you know, last time we talked, your heart function was back up to 30 percent, right? It's 55 percent now, bro. Yeah. OK, so yeah. in September, bro, it was at 13. It's 55. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the first time we talked, it was at 13. And I remember before I released your episode, I tried sending you something and I didn't hear back from you for like five days. And I said to my wife, oh, my God, yeah. like this dude's heart function was like 10 percent. Like, oh, my God, I hope he's OK. Yeah. You know, kind of thing. And so the fact that you came on two months later in December and you're like, oh, I'm at 33 and now you're at 55. Yeah. Bro, like you're doing the right shit. If you were still using meth every single morning, shooting up on your bathroom toilet like you used to, your heart would not be a 55% function right now. Right. So take that, the fact that your heart is getting stronger, now your recovery is getting stronger. The fact that you're opening up about this is going to make your recovery stronger. And I know I wasn't sure when I was going to release it, but given this being the topic, I'll release it tomorrow, probably even just do a double and just just to get it out there for you, because I know you want it out there and I, I want it out there for you, because I know once it's out there for you, you're going to hold yourself more accountable for it. Yeah, and, and, and I'm going to take a lot of shit, but I'm working. I'm ready, you know. Yeah, but bro, the people that you want in your recovery are the people that are going to be sitting here saying thank you. Yeah. Tell me more. Yeah. Why do you think that you did? You know, that kind of shit. Those are the ones that you want in your recovery. The ones that are going to bash you and call you a piece of shit, kick rocks. You're not yeah. going to be any good for your recovery. Right. You know, if you can't stand stand by somebody who is trying, it's not like you're like, JD, I relapse and I'm done talking recovery. Just, you know, lose my number, lose my Facebook. Then it's like, okay, bro, good luck out there. But you're that's not what you're doing. Nah, you're saying you're saying, hey, I did this, but I want to get stronger. Can you help me get stronger? Yeah, man, I'm here for that shit. And I appreciate it. You know, uh, yeah, I was at my I mean, two weeks ago, I hung myself in the garage. I'm glad it didn't take, bro. That me too, brother, because it was just I, the weight of the weight of it, you know, weight of it. 
and I just kept trying to figure out how I was going to do it, and, and I was going to get this out there and get it, you know. So I appreciate you. I'm very grateful for you. Hey, man. You know, this is I why I do this every, shit. Everything that I said to people, I met. Yeah. And when I said I love you, I love you. And when I said I'm here for you, I'm here for you, you know. The only thing you didn't mean was your date, bro. I'm not going to fault you for that. Right. Like but I said. I, I want them to know that, I, that I, I'm still here. And, uh, and I still want to do what I can do to help people, you know. I just. I guess it. You're gonna, people are going to gain strength from this. You gain strength from this. You learn lessons. The fact that you wanted to open up and, you know, I could just tell in your message, you know, he needs to talk. That's why, literally, I was like, give me five minutes, I'll send you a Skype. Yeah, no, it was awesome. I wasn't expecting that, but I'm glad you did, you know? Yep. Uh, but if, I, if, if, if you wouldn't have did it that way, I probably would have backed out later. I'd be like, nah, bro, I was okay. I just had a moment, you know? Yeah. And then no, the lie would have <clears> continued. <throat> and now it doesn't have to. No, you know, it have to. It's out there because I know you're putting it out there. <laughs> whether you're listening, whether you're watching, if you have some encouraging things for Foster, his Facebook will be right in the description if you want to hit him up. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of you, you that are listening or watching that can actually relate. You might have even been there. You might have even done it. I, I have no loss of respect for you whatsoever. I've gained more respect for you. I love you, brother. I really do. Love you too, man. Yeah, you, you, literally, you did not lose any respect in my eyes. Just gained because it takes so much fucking guts to do what you just did. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know. So, and anybody watching this, you know, know how hard this is. Everyone knows, and anyone who is a big viewer of my show that's seen the episodes that knows who you are already, we know how much you fucking care about this, bro. I do, I I do. It, my heart aches for freaking addicts, but it, I can't get the ache for my own, you know. Now it does, right? Now yeah. I I feel it now, bro. I feel you aching for yourself, and I hope that you knowing that I'm still here and we're all still gonna be here. I guarantee you, you're gonna get a lot more support than you think, and I hope that you draw strength from this. You know, that's that's what we do. We we give each other strength, dude. That's you know, that's my hope, you know, that that I, I and I feel better, you know, good. I, it's a release, you know, yeah. it is, it's a release to come clean about stuff, you know, so. All I'm I glad I'm and, glad I could do that for you, man. Anybody else, if you're having a day like Foster, you need to vent to me and you want to do it on this just to air out your dirty laundry and feel better. Hit me up. That's I love new having podcast, a platform. Dirty laundry. <laughs> yeah, dirty laundry. I'm sure it's already out there, bro. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure I just made you. I just made you a new show. Yeah, I already got. I got my other, and and now that I, I will also announce, um, February twenty second, two twenty two twenty two, on Recovery Revolution, my new show is starting. Um, that is called Laughter Is a Drug. Period. Um, it's based on the term alcohol is a drug. Period from the NA literature. Um, but I took out alcohol replaced with laughter and it's going to be a variety comedy show where it's all recovery based where it's going to be different funny memes from recovery different funny videos i'm going to be doing sketches like snl like pre-recorded sketches that we drop in going to have guests on there doing lives and telling funny stories from addiction and recovery so that's coming out in two three weeks yeah february 22nd and that's going to be my other show on top of this show because yeah. we both know I don't know how to stop. And, you know, but I, this is why I do this shit, man, is, you know, this kind of connection, you know, or this one right here. I'm going to I'm going to end it with this. I got this comment last night. Um, It was like late, too, man. It was but it was it made my day. It was um, this person. I never even heard of this dude, so I don't know who it is. Bro, you're awesome. I love that I found these. I've started over on the other side of the country. No one but my baby mama and my daughters. No one to talk to no, and about any of this shit. No acquaintances. So listening to these episodes really helps me out a lot. 
You're doing it, bro. You know, that made my night when I saw that shit. Knowing that somebody out there is getting sober, binge watching our episodes, bro. That's awesome. And hearing us talk about recovery, you know. They're not hearing us talk about dates, dude. Yeah. They're, they don't tune in. You know, the first question I ask is the date just to get it out of the way. You know, I ask the first question I ask everybody is, what's your sober date? Oh, it's, you know, February 1st. Okay, what happened January 31st? That's always the first questions I ask back to back. Right. It, it, but the the point is, I ask them the date so that I can ask them what happened. Right. You right. know, it's, I don't give a fuck about the dates. I care that you're trying your best and you're talking recovery, dude. Yeah. That's what you're doing. And I love you for it. And I appreciate you. And keep talking. Keep writing. And keep talking. This is part of your story. Own that shit. When you oh. own it, it doesn't have any power. Yeah. Yeah. I love All you, right. brother. I love you too, man. Hang, hang in there. If you need anything, hit me up. Same. Always. All right. I'll All talk right, to brother. you soon. All right, man. Thank you All very right. much. No problem. My pleasure. I'll see All you. Right.